Hi, my name is George May, Battalion 3, C-Shift. Today we're going to be discussing large area search. This video was shot so that you can see what you won't be able to see in a no visibility situation. Over the past year, the MDFR Training Division has developed a new large area search. We call it the perimeter search. The perimeter search cuts down on the square footage of large open spaces warehouses, body shops, big box stores. The purpose of the perimeter search is to shrink the square footage, maintain accountability and orientation, and locate places where we're most likely to find victims. What makes MDFR's large area perimeter search so different? We're asking you to depend on the tick. We rely on the tick to cut large areas of space, search for victims, and maintain accountability and orientation. If your tick fails, you're going to tie off your rope, exit the structure, and we'll replace you with a crew with a working tick. Rescue 19, command. Command, go ahead, Rescue 19. Chief, I got an open door on the off off Bravo side. We're going to go inside and do a perimeter search. I understand you got an open door on the Alpha side, starting a perimeter search. Uh, why don't you guys ride the Alpha wall? Copy, Chief. Hey, the room. As the firefighters enter the threshold, they must conduct a three-level scan that will give them an idea of the space they are about to enter, the temperatures at the ceiling, and their intended direction of travel. The officer should give their firefighter a view of the tick so they can have a picture of the environment as well. At the threshold, the OIC will clear the initial space and ask the point to shoot 10 to 20 feet ahead to their first stopping point. The purpose for stopping every 10 to 20 feet is for accountability, as well as allowing the officer a chance to scan the new area for victims or fire and rescan the previous area from a new angle. The officer and Gib will follow the rope up to the point and rescan the entire area. If the officer finds an area of interest that is within voice distance, he can leave the rope and investigate. If he chooses, the officer can bring the gib with him to search the area. By bringing the gib, he can extend their reach, keeping everyone within voice distance. Hey, back on rope! At 100 feet, firefighters will radio the ICA CAN report and conduct an air check before moving forward. Out of rope? Out of rope. What's your air? I got 3,500. What's your air? 3,300. Number 35. Rescue 19 to command. We're about 100 feet in. We're going to extend our rope. We got double good on air. We're searching a uh, high rack uh, space. Tempest at the ceiling are still okay. At 200 feet, search crews will require permission from the IC to move deeper into the structure. If permission is denied or the search is complete, the search crew will tie off and ride their search rope back to their egress point exiting the structure. The rope is left behind in case the IC wants to extend the search further or use that rope for a backbone search later in the incident. When conducting large area searches, the IC can and most likely will utilize multiple search crews to cover the entire perimeter as quickly as possible. When changing direction, crews should do everything in their power to locate an anchor point for the turn. Additionally, Crews should create an anchor anytime they pass an egress point. Off rope on your left side. Off rope. I got an exit right here. Got an exit. Bravo Charlie Corner. We've identified an exit. I understand engine 30 is reaching the Bravo Charlie Corner. All right, guys, we're going to ride the Charlie wall. Charlie wall. Later in the incident, the IC may call for a backbone search. The purpose of the backbone search is to clear areas of interest that are deeper toward the middle of the structure and away from the perimeter. Crews will ride the previously deployed perimeter rope and deploy from that rope, leaving the point to anchor while the OIC and GIB search the space. This method is good for high rack storage and or long aisles. <laughs> 